So today we are talking about talking about politics. No, just kidding. Oh no, I didn't want to undo that. Let's redo that. Okay, there we go. Welcome everybody. We're gonna be talking about super memorists today. And uh yeah, yeah, Cammy. The the they're gonna be on uh, Brightspace at the end of um the week. At the end of the week, as soon as we're done with class on Friday. Okay, so two people that we're gonna talk about today um are known for their super memory. Okay, are known for their super memory, and uh. Well, it turns out that we can apply some of the theories that we talked about. So to recap what we were talking about the other day, we were talking about capacity theory versus technique theory, right? Oh, I should probably finish that word. Theory. So, like I said, the guys that we're going to end up talking about today. Come on. There we go. We can sort of assess through that lens. Through either of those lens. But before I do that, I want to talk about the two guys that we're going to talk about who are the testers of this, uh, of these people, especially the two that we're going to talk about today. So the testers. So these are the psychologists. And one you should be for very familiar with. And one you may not be as familiar with. So the one that you should be familiar with is the one who's above me right now. This guy. This is Alfred Binet. So can somebody tell me in chat who they remember Alfred Binet being? He was an intelligence test designer and researcher right and then the other guy who I will put on the screen right now this is Jean Maltin Charcot I should put the name up there for you so this good looking guy look at him with his pin right there metal you know so Jean Martin Charcot and um, I don't think I, I would have mentioned him in in any other um, classes classes but he was also uh, a, a intelligence researcher among other things, he was like an all-around guy. So these are the people, Benet and Charcot. So you can imagine the, the first two guys that we are going to talk about were in Europe because these two guys are French. So let's talk about the first super memorist. His name was Jacques, I think Jacques, yeah, Jacques Enaudi, and um, he was Italian, okay, and this is late 1800s, okay, so what could he do? The interesting thing about Enaudi is... He was illiterate. 
Uh, let's spell this better. Let's do this better. And he was a shepherd. So he so things to know about an Audi that make his abilities quite intriguing is that one, he could not read. And two, he wasn't even in a position to learn how to read or go to school or anything. Like he was a lower class farmer shepherd. Okay. He was taught the numbers one to 100. So he knew one to 100, obviously in Italian. Uh, so he could do that. He could do that, but he couldn't do anything else. And one of the reasons we'll say why he, you know, knew one to 100 is because he needed to count his flock, right? He needed to count his flock. But one thing that shocked people about him was that after he learned how to count from one to 100, he began to... Um, he began to do arithmetic. And he began to get really well known. First in his little community uh, and then outside his little community. Okay. Now, we said that, um, so Miller in 1956 said uh, work, uh, short-term memory capacity just to remind everyone and if there is any non-students watching uh short-term capacity was seven plus or minus two right an audi could do way more than that way more after a single presentation what so this is pretty wild. I would say that's pretty wild. Like, oh my gosh, man. Yeah. And <clears throat> how many of you can do 42 digits? Can anybody in chat do 42 digits? Hmm. Or can you do 42 digits in a single pre after a single presentation or um without knowing what the numbers look like? So let's imagine here for a second, that you're being taught a number system. You're being taught a number system that uh, doesn't use Arabic numerals. Okay, and you're only told how they're how they're how they're set. You're only told how they're set. Could you do it? Could you even do could you even do five? Could you even do nine? How about 42? And that's what we found. We uh that's what we found um when Benet came over and Charcot came and, and chatted with him. And Benet concluded, superhuman capacity. Seems strange, though, doesn't it? Superhuman capacity. But then again, 
and this was specifically auditory information. But then again, he could repeat 42. So maybe, maybe he could just do things like that. Now, the other thing that he could do was he could take the cube root of a nine digit number. So let me, let's figure out a nine digit number. Um, and somebody with a calculator that's not doing anything right now can, can help me out with this. Uh, so let's take the cube root of a nine digit number. Uh, let's do three, seven, zero, one, five, two, eight, nine, four. Look at that. Did I use all of them? I did. No, six isn't in there. I missed six. So somebody take the cube root of that. Please tell me you your calculator can take the cube root. Your phone can take the cube root. It's probably been a, a while. So that equals, thanks, Hannah, uh, 718, basically, 718. I almost got a whole number. I almost got a whole integer. Look at that. Okay, so the first conclusion, I'm sorry. Um, I said, uh, uh, I said Benet concluded this. No, 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 no. It's actually. This was actually Benet here. Uh, change the pen. Nope. Okay. It was actually Charcot that said this. Benet, on the other hand, was like, mm, maybe not. So he wanted to test whether or not it really was capacity theory that we talked about. So what he did was he taught him letters. Taught him the letters, at least how they sounded. Since he was illiterate, he needed to be taught how they sounded, and it was going to take a while to do things like, um, like learning what they look like and things like that. Okay, so he definitely wanted to make sure that uh, it was going to be presented auditorily, because if auditory capacity was his key to success okay then he should have no problems with knowing what letters sounded like you know whatever the letters are in, in um, French or Italian I'm, I'm not entirely sure how Benet did this so he taught him the letters and he said let's try it let, let's try this again Let's try this again. And what what happened with an Audi was that um, an Audi normal seven plus or minus two capacity with letters. Bummer, right? That's a real bummer. So, with an Audi's case, oops, oops, is it capacity theory or technique? Can't spell today. Definitely not capacity, 100% technique. Now, whatever his, now whatever his technique was, Uh, he just did on his own. I don't think Benet was ever able to determine what kind of of techniques he were you he was using. So 
we don't really know. It's probably probably has something to do with the behaviors that he did. And first of all, it depends on, you know, uh, the techniques that he had used when he was learning how to count from one to 100. And it probably has something to do with the behaviors that he engaged in with shepherding. Um, because there really, really wasn't much, there really wasn't much else that he could do. Now, the arithmetic thing was really interesting. He probably learned uh, how to separate various uh, various I- items. So things like cube roots, right? So you you multiply things by three by by itself three times, and so then you can take apart things by themselves three times. He could he could probably do that. Yeah. Okay, next guy. Diamondi. Now, I couldn't find any uh things about Diamondi, unfortunately, but this was in a paper written uh written about him. So, we'll just have that behind me. How about that? Okay. So Diamandi, another European, same time period, he was Greek, okay? Both Charcot and Binet tested him. His thing, his thing was images. He could remember a ton of visual images. Okay. So to test Di- uh, Diamondi, you know, learning learning uh, from past mistakes, Charcot and Binet devised the following test, mostly Binet. So Binet test. What he did was he had a five by five matrix of numbers. Something that we'll we'll draw here. So let's get five rows. Isn't my matrix so pretty, right? Three, yeah, I need five. Yeah. All right. And then, whoop, whoop. That's not, that doesn't look that great. Okay. And uh, one, two, three. I'm just randomly putting numbers in here. Let's not forget about six. There we go. Sudoku. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so we got a six in there. What? Uh, uh, four. Uh, two fours. Okay, good. Go me. Um. Uh, there we go. Oh, nope. One more spot. Uh, two more spots. Um, let's make that one a nine and then make that a zero. There we go. Cool. So we asked him to memorize these 25 numbers, right? See, these are 25 numbers. And he could do it piece of cake right because 
what he did was he just took a, basically he was like, click, click, kind of, but click, click, looking at the grid, and so he knew where they were, okay? And then he would ask him to recall the last number. So we'll, we'll just say the last number, which is the last column, last row. And so that would be this two, right? Charcot was like, hmm. Totally capacity. I think Charcot really, really wanted there to be, I don't know, mutants out there with abilities to... Uh, you know, some sort of indication that people could get better uh, by just genetics, right? And and I, I I hate to break it to him, but Benet was was the expert. He was the expert. He was like, I know it. I know there's something there's something off about this. So if Diamondi was using his picture, click click, click click, then he would have no trouble figuring out the two. Okay. Like, you could by just literally looking at it, right? So, Diamondi should just come really quick with the two. But here's the problem. He could not. It took him longer, much longer... To find the two, find, you know, our, our example here is two, okay? When he was asked to produ produ produce these numbers, the one, three, and four, for example, or the one, two, you know, this, this first set, if we're con considering this is first and over here is last, uh, And so there was something, there was something about the location. So there was a correlation between location and time. So it would sort of look like this. Time. Or actually, no, I don't want time right there. I want location on the like x-axis here. Location uh, in, in grid or in matrix. Whoa. And then over here, let's see, can I write? Look at that, right? And so what ended up happening is you got this scatter plot that looked like that. The other interesting thing is if we go back up to this, so we have uh, the positive diagonal, which is this positive diagonal or the negative diagonal. Okay. One being in the center there. Look at that. One being in the center. If he was asked to report only numbers in the positive or negative diagonal, so either of those diagonals, he took considerably longer than asked if to report any numbers in the rows. So it wasn't that he could remember the grid itself. Here's what Diamondi was doing. 
actually. I need... This is what he was doing. I'll do it up here, actually. And I'm going to underline technique because this is literally what he was doing. One, three, four, two, six, two, eight, nine, five, eight. I'm just going to move down to this line here. I'm not putting it in matrix form on purpose. It just ran out of room. Okay. Um, we have five, zero, one, three, three, seven, nine, six, four, eight, one, eight, zero, four, two. So what Diamondi was doing was he was starting here. And he was just skip hopping. And so when Benet asked him to search for one number versus another number, it took him longer because he was traversing the order in which he memorized the numbers. Isn't that wild? He was not doing anything... He was not doing anything like Memory Palace or anything like that. Or maybe he was, but it was in a place that he would traverse in order. So how would it look here it, using method of, of loci would be like he did a one and maybe he took a walk and went to four and then he took a walk to another room and he found a three and it would take him a while traversing his memory palace till he got to that final two. I'm gonna be like, ah, gotta walk all the way around there. Whoa. And it's interesting actually, because being Greek, because the, me the method of loci was developed by the Greeks. So he was, he was being a country person, right? He was, doing things that weren't that he got a big brain. He was just using the techniques like like a smart person, right? So through the 18 the late 1800s we still have no we still have no super memorists let me call this method of loci here oops No huge memories. Yet. How was he able to remember all those numbers? That's a good question, Hannah. Um, so there are, there are a few ways uh, that um, you can remember numbers in a serial position. So method of loci, which is this. You just remember them in a certain order. So method of loci or the memory palace, you walk a familiar tract, a place, a home, and you assign numbers to different objects in that home. So that's one way. And so when he was recalling the numbers, he was just following the same path that he follows every single time. There could also he could also have done a an early version. So Pavio hadn't hadn't um, talked about the peg 
word hypothesis just yet, but it doesn't mean that it didn't exist prior to Pavio coining the the phrase uh, to assign numbers to uh, uh, objects that you can um, think of concretely. So visual images concretely. That 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 essentially that's what he was doing. Uh, he was up he and and if it was something other than numbers, essentially what he was doing was he was taking aspects of it, which is uh, like these grids of dots here on this. Uh, if we were to look at this, this grids of dots. Um, he was able to do that because he would just put the visual elements in an order and so over and above any claim that Charcot had of this guy's got a big brain he's got a really cool really good memory this is a this is this is uh, he is just got a higher capacity than everyone else no it's it's that he was using better memory techniques like we were talking about on Friday he was he was just engaging and techniques that allowed him to remember things. Which means, which means that these things are open to you all. Okay. And as I as I repeated uh several times on uh on Friday, technique theory. So the main takeaway from technique theory is time and effort. If you have the motivation, and well, I guess motivation too. If you have the time and effort, you can do it. 